I'm Phil, co-founder of Cybersecurity Hub and AttackForge. In this tutorial, I'll cover the basics on how to get started using attackforge.com. Firstly, AttackForge is a collaboration platform to manage all your pen testing projects or programs. It's designed to be used by pen testers, security teams, developers, architects, system administrators, and pretty much anybody who needs to be involved in a penetration testing project. What you'll see when you first log in is a global dashboard. From here, you see a summary of all vulnerabilities across all your projects, as well as a status for each project. You can click on any box to drill down further, as an example. However, to get started, let's access the projects menu. Here you can see all the projects you have access to. The first thing to do is create a new project. You can do that by clicking the Create New Project button in the top right hand corner. Here you add a project name. For example, let's call this project Phil's Web Application Pentest. You can add a project code, for example, AF001. It's entirely up to you what your project code is. We select a start date and completion date. So let's select the start today and a week from now. And in this case, let's say we're testing attackforge.com. So this is where we add our scope. Lastly, we need to assign test suites to the project. We have a bunch of pre-built test suites which already come standard in Attackforge. However, you can use the test suite builder module to create your own test suites for individual projects, customers, or however you wish to define your test suites. In, in this case, let's just pick a web application test suite and create the project. Here we can see the project's just been created and is now ready to start. However, let's click on an already pre-populated project. You can now see the project dashboard, which has a summary of all vulnerabilities as well as status. You can click on any box to drill down. For example, if I click on high, I can see all the high issues, then drill down to a specific issue. From here, I can see all the information relating to this vulnerability, as well as uploaded evidence. I can also add more evidence, edit the vulnerability, open or close this issue, add remedia remediation notes, or set it back to not ready for retesting. However, the first thing to do when you create a new project is to give access to your project team. So from the menu, you select Manage Access. Here you can add people to your project and define their level of access. If we select Grant Access to User, we can now put in an email address and assign the level of privilege to this project for a given user. That user will receive an email with further instructions. So back from the project dashboard, you can also access group chats with your project team. This helps to keep everyone informed. There's also email notifications which get sent when a message gets posted. You can also access scope to see what we're testing in this project. From here, you can add more scope or adjust if necessary. You can also send email notifications to everyone on the team to show that you've started or stopped testing on this project. There's also a workspace where you can upload all necessary details required for testing. This helps to consolidate all information securely in one place without having to send it via email or other insecure methods. Back from the projects screen, you can access the test cases which will be performed on this project. Remember, 
These were loaded when I created the project and selected Web Application Test Suite. Here the pen tester can work through each test case and everyone on this project will have visibility. You can also add vulnerabilities as they are discovered. We've built into Attack Forge a library with over 1300 vulnerability definitions, built from CWE, CAPEC and other sources. It makes reporting easy. You can also add your own using the vulnerability library. However, this is included in a different tutorial. So let's create a vulnerability quickly. Let's pretend I just identified reflected cross-site scripting. Here you can see the full list of issues in the vulnerability library. However, let's search for reflected cross-site scripting. Now we select the asset or assets which have been affected by this vulnerability. However, let's select the application. We can adjust the likelihood of exploitation based on on the specific requirements of how this vulnerability gets exploited against this specific system. We also select the priority rating. In this case, let's say it's a critical issue. In the next part, we define the proof of concept or steps to reproduce the vulnerability. For example, do this, do that. If we need to add individual notes or any more information um, specific to this issue, um, we can add it uh, separately as a note. Lastly, you can see it's populated uh, by tags um, to give the, the reader more information or place or reference points. Or we can also add the associated test case which was being performed during testing which led to discovery of this vulnerability. Once we've identified vulnerabilities, we can build attack chains to help people visualize and better understand how the vulnerability or vulnerabilities are being exploited or how they can be grouped together with other vulnerabilities to create a sequence of events that the attacker is conducting to reach their intended objective. You can see how to build an attack chain in a separate tutorial. Project teams can also upload all their vulnerabilities uh, to their own Jira Cloud project. Again, we have a separate tutorial video on how this works. You can also upload testing logs to the project. This helps to make it easier for retesting and takes away the dependency on storing logs on pen testers machines. So anybody on a project can also download the reports. There are executive reports and also vulnerability reports which are provided in PDF, DOCX, CSV. You feel free to adjust the DOCX report with your own information and then provide it to your client or stakeholders. So let's look at a vulnerability report in PDF. As you can see, the report's currently being created and will be available for use shortly. Okay. Reports now being downloaded. Let's open up the report. As you can see, there's a standard contents page, some information about the uh, vulnerabilities which were discovered on this project, as well as the total amount of test cases which were performed on this project. There's also some information about whether there was any zero-day vulnerabilities discovered or easily exploitable vulnerabilities discovered. There's also a customizable executive notes section. This is where you can include more information about the project, including any limitations or anything else which you would like to highlight to the reader. There's a separate page which includes some brief summary of the project so start dates, end dates, the progress when this report was generated, also the scope and who was on the project team. 
On this page, you can see a list of all the vulnerabilities which were discovered in, on this project, ranked by their criticality. The next part of the report details each one of those vulnerabilities in detail, it includes the descriptions, attack scenarios, recommendations, tags, as well as notes and steps to reproduce for every asset which was affected by this vulnerability on this project. So as you can see, there's quite a few issues which were discovered on this project, which we are quickly scrolling through. Uh, it does also include when, uh, when issues have been um, remediated or closed off, as well as the corresponding timestamp. However, if we scroll to the bottom, we can see there's an appendice uh, which contains information about the executive summary, as well as the severity definitions, and also a list of all the individual test cases which were performed on this project and their corresponding status. So that wraps up this introductory tutorial. We also have other tutorials which explain specific functionalities and workflows in greater details. So please make sure to check these out. And lastly, if you're wondering if there's an enterprise version of ATTACKFORGE, the answer is yes. So please visit cybersechub.com.au for more details. Thank you.